Hello, friends. Are you ready? What's for dinner? <laughs> I'm hungry. Yum, 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 yum. Delicious. Let's go, everybody. Yay! Yay! Oh, gosh. Am I on? Yeah. Camera, lights, action. Pork tenderloin in a vodka mustard sauce. Psaronefri ti zoís me vodka ke mustarda. Hello. Welcome to Zoe's Blind Kitchen Corner. Now you're going to think, wow, she's happy this week. Yeah, my cameraman purposely made me laugh. He said something funny just as he pressed the record button, which, good job. <laughs> okay, yes, we are happy in this house. Well, we're upon the nativity season. The fast starts in a few days. So I'm making my last meat dish of the season until we celebrate the nativity of Christ. In other words, as most people call it, Christmas. So. You guys will probably see this during the nativity fast, but we made it before. Anyhow, welcome to Zoe's Blind Kitchen Corner. If you need to reach me, Zoe's Blind Kitchen Corner at gmail.com. Comments in the section below on YouTube, and I will definitely answer you. Uh, or send me an email, or call me, or, I don't know, do a drive-by. <laughs> Bye. Hello, Zoe. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Yeah. I'm in that, that kind of a mood. So, um, we, what are we making this week? Very quick, very easy, very delicious. To be honest with you, if you serve this, this, this kind of reminds me of what somebody would serve way back, you know, 40, 50 years ago, whatever. Uh, Sunday lunch or dinner was very, very big, very important, a nice family dinner. And, and in Greece, uh, in the olden days, that's when they had meat. They only had really meat on Sundays. They really didn't have meat throughout the week. They had a little bit of fish and beans and different things. Ah, some people, let's say, that were a little bit better off, maybe they had meat twice a week. Sundays and one other day. But normally the family Sunday dinner was consistent of some sort of meat dish. Lamb, goat, beef, pork, whatever. Depending on the season too. Anyhow, um, so somebody might actually think, oh wow, but this is a even a weeknight. Come home from work, you're really tired as long as you have the ingredients obviously. Um, and you've either bought your meat fresh or you've defrosted it from the morning or, you know, whatever, from the night before in the fridge, then you're good to go. This meal will be ready in like 30, top 40 minutes. Anyhow, we're making pork tenderloin in a vodka mustard sauce. Uh, Zoe's pork tenderloin in vodka mustard sauce, yes. Um, this recipe is adapted from... Uh, recipes on the similar recipes on the internet of course as always i've messed with it because i just like to mess with things and i've made it my own and i've made it the way we like it my family likes it and that's it that's all and i have made this recipe just in case you don't have vodka maybe you have zinfandel on hand zinfandel is uh one of my favorite wines it's a rosé and I have made this with Zinfandel as well, and it's really good. So it's your choice, okay? Uh, just in case you're interested, the Greek word for pork tenderloin is psaronefri. Um, what else do I need to tell you? That's all. You can serve this with fries, rice, mashed potatoes, a combination of those things. It's really good with any of those things. Even maybe some rice, some mashed potatoes, and a few roasted vegetables. I'm doing a nice Greek green lettuce salad, which I've showed you uh, the lettuce salad uh, when we did the, I don't remember, <laughs> but I know I showed it to you. So we've done an, a Greek lettuce salad. So it's lettuce, onions, lemon juice, or vinegar, olive oil, 
Uh, some people add cucumber, some people add dill, uh, but your tradition is green onions and uh, lettuce. And in Greece, really tradition is dill as well, but my mom doesn't like it, so I don't put it in. Um, and I've already made my rice, it's ready to go. So let's get to the ingredients. We've got a kilogram of pork tenderloin cut into eight pieces. Then we've got back, back there, uh, black pepper. I'm gonna add in a couple of pinches of black pepper. Below the black pepper, I've got four tablespoons of instant mashed potatoes. Then I've got three teaspoons of paprika. Then I've got uh, two teaspoons of ground thyme leaves. Then I've got one and a half teaspoons of kosher salt. I've got four tablespoons of mustard. One and a half, uh, sorry, juice of one and a half lemons. Four garlic cloves cut in half. And water. Have I forgotten anything? I don't think so. Oh, yes, and one cup vodka. See, I did forget that. I want to mention that if you have Dijon mustard... Dijon is excellent for this recipe. I'm out of it, so I'm just using yellow mustard. <coughs> Pardon me. I have made it with both, and it's just as good with both. Also, do, do not use thyme, ground thyme powder. Powder is really strong. This is just the ground thyme leaves, like oregano or whatever. Um, and we already talked about the vodka, so we're ready. Oh, sorry. And two-thirds cup olive oil, which is in my frying pan. Um, so I'm just going to switch places with my cameraman. I've washed the meat. I've cut it up. I'm going to turn my heat between medium. Let me think for a second. Yeah, just a little above medium, okay? I'm going to uncover my pan. I want you to use a deep frying pan. So this is not one of your frying pans that has the um, slanted edges. It's a straight-edged frying pan. It kind of looks like a pot that you cook in, a nonstick pot, but somebody cut it in half. So it's, it's a deep frying pan that comes with a lid, okay? So I need you to make sure you use the lid. Um, yeah, I will show you. So I'm gonna grab pieces of meat. <clears throat> and I'm gonna put it in the oil. Oil's not ready yet, but that's okay. I'm gonna wait a few seconds. I thought it would have been hot by now because I was using the uh, I'm just going to turn it up so it can get hot quicker. Um, I thought it was going to get hotter faster because I was using the burner for the rice. But I guess not. Anyways, let's add the second piece. So I do have eight pieces to add in. Three, four, five, six. So make sure that you have a big enough frying pan to fit six pieces of meat. And now it's starting to sizzle, so I'm going to turn it back down. Back down to whatever, six. Mm -hmm. And I've got two more pieces left. So my frying pan fits, whoops, fits my meat comfortably, I think. <laughs> No, I can see. Okay. Now, if you're a novice blind cook and a sighted cook is describing to you what I'm doing, don't do it. Because I'm not a beginner, I can do this. I'm basically putting my finger on the meat and I'm moving them around while the meat is in hot oil. Don't do that. Okay? Unless you're really experienced with meat. Okay, again, I'm gonna nine, 
eight, seven. I'm just gonna go between seven and six. Medium is five. So I kind of went between seven and six. I'm gonna let this saute for five minutes and I'm gonna wash my hands in the meantime and we'll be back to flip hey guys, them. guys, we're back. It's time to flip them. I'm gonna turn my heat right down because for me it's dangerous. I, I told you guys I hate frying and it is hard for me. So I've turned my heat down all the way to, I'll see, it, it's splattered. I've turned it down all the way to, to simmer. <laughs> Stop it. We have, we, we just, uh, our cutting board, I washed it and I put it in the dish rack and it, it decided to uh, fall back into the sink. Okay, so I'm waiting for this to calm down a little bit, but I'm gonna grab a piece And with the other fork, I'm gonna, gonna flip it. And with the other fork, I'm gonna, that's uh, what I hate. Did I do it? Mm -mm. Yeah, I didn't think so. Let's try again. Let's try this piece better. Mm -hmm. There you go. See? It takes, I'm nervous because I'm on camera. It takes a little bit of practice. I just flipped one. I need to flip all eight pieces, okay? So I showed you, I showed you, I showed the sighted people that I can do it. For blind people, you have to either use tongs or use two forks like I am, and you help yourself with the two forks. You feel with your fork so that you can flip, okay? So we'll be back in five minutes. I'm gonna flip these and we're gonna saute them for another five minutes, and we'll be back. I should have added the garlic, in when I added the meat and I forgot. I'm adding it in now. I've turned the, the meat and we're waiting for it to saute for another five minutes, okay? So I, I'm so sorry. I wasn't thinking and just pushing the garlic around. Um, I, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. It's still gonna get sauteed, okay? But it goes in at the beginning with the meat. So that's what I wanted to tell you guys. I had to come back quickly to show you. I threw the garlic in. How much time do I have left on the timer? 158. Yeah, I've still got two minutes. So it's gonna saute for about three minutes. We're still gonna add in other ingredients. So believe me, it'll be okay. But I should have added it in at the beginning. Um, it'll, yeah, it'll just give us a less garlic fragrance. So. There's no point in me putting you guys on hold now. I've only got two minutes. You can hear my um, meat. It's because I've got it back up to between six and seven. So medium high uh, because I want to get that crust on the meat. Right? You, you're, you're sauteing on one side and on the other side. You're giving your meat a crust, which means you're enclosing your juices. The juices, the natural juices of the meat, you're enclosing them in. Some people actually even uh, add a little bit of flour, like a little bit of flour to their meat before they add it into the olive oil. But that will thicken up your sauce way more than it should. So this works just fine as well for what we want to do. Um, we've got about a minute left, 50 seconds, and we're going to add in the vodka. Now, be careful. You spill vodka, it will catch on fire quickly. Mm -hmm. So you must be careful. If you're nervous, do not do it over your frying pan. Do it over a bowl and then add it in. I am gonna do it over the frying pan, but I'm also gonna take down my temperature again. Okay, so I've taken down my temperature and I'm going to grab my one cup, vodka in hand, I'm gonna turn off my timer. Okay, slowly, still sizzling a lot. I hope it doesn't splatter me. See, this is my issue. Okay, I've got the vodka, got the cup and the vodka over the frying pan. 
Oops, added a little more. So I added maybe, how much would you say? About two tablespoons over the cup? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. It's vodka. Okay, now I'm gonna turn my heat to medium, but actually to six, just one over medium, because I need the vodka to boil. I need it to... The alcohol to evaporate. That's right. See, my camera knows exactly what I was thinking, and he knows that I was thinking about it in Greek and trying to remember how to say it in English, <laughs> and he said it for me. So this is what we need. We need the alcohol to evaporate. So you need to give this a couple of minutes. Otherwise, it ain't gonna taste very good. And this is rule of thumb with any alcohol that you cook with, with any wine. Unless you want a flambe, that's a different story. Not good for blind people. <laughs> you know, you set your vodka on fire, you can't see. Well, no, that's not good. So, anyways, we're waiting for this. It's pretty much boiling, but I can smell it. Anyways, I'm going to start adding in because while that's happening, that can go in the sink. Okay, we're not going to add in. We're going to add in everything except spices, spice-wise. We're gonna add in our pepper at this point. So I'm gonna grab two healthy, healthy pinches. One, two, you can hear the vodka boiling. Let's put this aside so we know we've added it. Okay, we're gonna add in, whoops, that's the mashed potato. We're gonna add in our three teaspoons of paprika. Just sprinkle it all around. Don't worry, we're gonna add water to this, so even if it doesn't um, go everywhere, you're not, you're good. We're gonna add in our one, or sorry, two teaspoons of thyme, ground thyme leaves. Okay. So now we've got salt, which we're not gonna add in now, lemon juice, mustard, and the mashed potatoes. We are not going to add those things in now. Grab me a cupa. Coffee? Yeah, please. Anyway, so I've just got, oh, this one's a big one, <laughs> a, nor, a regular size. All right, I've got a regular size teacup or coffee cup, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to add water to my, to my meat. Whoops, one, that's one. See how many, my husband wants a lot of sauce. Two, where are we at? Uh, I'm gonna do three. Meat's covered? Not completely. Yeah. Meat's covered, right? Yeah. Gotta make sure your meat's covered. Well, it's... some meat is in a pan, no? but it's not in the Yeah, yeah, but I'm gonna... So my cameraman's telling me something in Greek. He's just saying that my meat is floating and some edges are out. I'm just gonna check with my fork. And at this point, it's not hot. <laughs> meat should be covered and it's not. It's floating. So... Yes, I just licked my finger, and I'm going to wipe it clean. Let's add a little bit more water. Let's do it with a cup. I don't know if it'll take a full cup. Mm -mm. Let's try half. Let's see where we are. How far down are we? Uh, yeah. All right. It's good enough. Three mm -hmm. and a half cups, huh? Mm-hmm. I agree. Okay. At this point, boys and girls, <coughs> cover your pot. 
when it comes to a boil, take it down to medium and you're gonna set your timer for 20 minutes. And then we're gonna, sorry. When it comes to a boil, you're gonna take it down to medium. You're gonna set your timer for 10 minutes. At the 10 minute mark, you're gonna flip your meat, uncover, flip your meat, check the water level. If you can add a little bit more water at that point, add it in. Another half a cup, a, half, a cup. You can do this in a pot. If, you, if I was doing this in a pot, I would have added four cups of water right now, but it didn't fit for me because of the pan I'm using. It fit three and a half. But if I was doing it in a pot, I would do four cups. And then the 10 minute mark, flip, maybe add another cup of water and let it boil again for another 10 minutes. So total 20 minutes of boiling. Okay, so we'll be back for the next steps. Hey guys, we're back. Our meat has been cooking for um, 20 minutes. We did flip it at the 10 minute mark. We did not add water. It didn't need it. So I've got mustard in a bowl. I need, uh, I'll use this fork, okay. I'm going to add in my, uh, with my mustard, I'm gonna add in my lemon juice into the bowl with the mustard. So juice of one and a half lemons. And I'm gonna give it a stir, just with the fork I was using to flip the meat. Now, I'm gonna take a quarter cup and uncover my meat. See if I can get some juice happening here. There we go. It's pretty much. You got a squirtle as well. Oh, that's okay. I got a garlic in my too hot for me to put my finger in it. Mm -hmm. So I'm adding some juice from the uh, meat. I'm just going to get rid of the garlic that's in here. There we go. So the way I did that is I felt for the garlic with my fork and I pushed it up the side. So I added in about a quarter cup of juice into my bowl with my uh, mustard and lemon juice. And now I'm going to add in my uh, instant mashed potatoes. Four tablespoons of instant mashed potatoes. And I'm stirring. And I'm not stirring vigorously because I should have used a bigger bowl. <laughs> I'm going to stir a little bit vigorously. <laughs> okay, I'm just going to leave this aside for a second. I'm going to add my salt. I've turned my meat down to simmer because it's been boiling for 20 minutes, okay? I'm going to add in my salt at this point. Okay, I've added in my salt. Okay, and let's continue stirring. See, it's kind of thick. So I'm gonna add now just a little touch of water. Like just with my pitcher, I'm gonna add in a couple of gulps of water. And I'm gonna stir. Oh, what a nice smell. Okay, I'm going to take my bowl with my fork over my meat. I'm going to turn up my heat to medium. Let's give it a final stir. And add it in. Now, there's stuff left in the bowl. So I'm just gonna grab a little bit of water 
a little more water. Add a little bit of water to my bowl. Just get everything out. At this point, I'm going to use my fingers to help it. And I'm going to shove everything in. Okay, I'm just gonna put my bowl in the sink. Somewhere, oh, can you pass me a wooden spoon? Now we've added in all our ingredients, guys. <coughs> There's a big blob of <coughs> mashed potato mustard wine, or er, mustard sauce, so I'm just pushing it in with my um, wooden spoon. Just pushed it in. Just kind of moving the meat around and pushing the, so the sauce can kind of go everywhere. Now, people who are not blind, they kind of pick up their pan and shake it around. My pan is pretty full to the rim, so I don't want to do that. And I'm going to wait for this to come to a boil again. And I'm just going to boil it for a couple of minutes. And our food is ready. My salad is ready. While I'm waiting for this to boil, let me tell you that <clears throat> since we're coming up on the fast, obviously during the fast, I can't have mashed potatoes because they have milk and butter and whatever in them. So obviously I used instant mashed potatoes for this sauce. Well, I was left with a pouch of mashed potatoes. I don't prefer instant mashed potatoes. I prefer the real stuff. But since I have it, I took a saucepan, so I have mashed potatoes here. It's the instant stuff. I don't, like I said, I don't prefer it, but I, don't, I didn't want to throw it out either. So I put in a saucepan, one and a half cups of water and two tablespoons of margarine and a teaspoon of salt. You can do margarine or butter. I just happen to have margarine on hand and a teaspoon of salt. You basically bring it just before boiling. You want your, your margarine to melt into your water and you want it to be really hot. You add in your one pouch of instant mashed potatoes. You give it a quick stir, just one, one two times around the pot and let it sit for one minute. And then you stir vigorously for about, uh, sorry, and you add in your milk at that point. So when you take it off the heat, you add in your milk, your mashed potatoes, let it sit for about a, a minute, and then stir it vigorously. And you get very, I have to say, very instant, uh, fine, uh, smooth mashed potatoes. So I just did that while uh, my meat was cooking up. The rice is done, salad is cut up. So now this is boiling, pretty much. Yeah, it needs a little more. Yeah, it's partially boiling. So, all you do here at this point, I'm actually going to turn it up. Uh, let me put this on the plate for me. Thank you. So, once this boils, I turned it up to high actually, guys. Sorry. I'm covered now. High. I'm going to let it boil for three minutes and then I'm going to just let it sit for a couple of minutes off the heat so it can calm down. And then I'm going to serve. So I'll be back once I, this finishes boiling in three minutes and I have served the food to say goodbye to you. And that way I can go have dinner. See you in a couple of minutes. My lovelies, dinner is ready. Very easy recipe. I've served. Rice is done. You want to know how to make my excellent rice, which everybody asks me for the recipe. Go see the episode Barbecue Time uh, with rice, mashed potatoes, and other sides. Something like that. It's called something like that. Uh, mashed potatoes, instant mashed potatoes. I told you about that. I like my homemade mashed potatoes. You can also see the recipe uh, uh, on another episode. And don't forget your pork tenderloin. Saute it with the garlic, five minutes on one side, five minutes on the other side. Add in your vodka, 
add in your spices, paprika, uh, thyme, and uh, pepper. Uh, let your vodka evaporate. Add in water enough to cover the meat, about four cups. Uh, use a pot if you don't have a deep enough frying pan. Mine, mine took three and a half cups, which is fine. I've got plenty of sauce. And let your meat boil. Uh, for 20 minutes on medium, covered, flip it at the 10 minute mark, uh, flip your meat at the 10 minute mark, at the end of the 20 minutes, mix up your mashed potatoes, your mustard, your lemon juice, and about a quarter cup of juice from the meat mixture, and mix all that up, maybe even if you have a bigger bowl, maybe even half a cup of juice, uh, get your mashed potatoes as dissolved as possible. Uh, mine was a little thick because I used a small bowl like an idiot. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I love idiots. I'm one of them. <laughs> yeah, and then add it in back and add your mustard mixture into your uh, meat mixture. Let it boil up for about three minutes. Turn it off. Let it sit for about three minutes and then serve. So I've got a plate here and it's got mashed potatoes on it. It's got rice with sauce on it because the person who this plate is for my mom she didn't want any of the sauce the wine mustard sauce she didn't want it on her mashed potatoes she wanted it just on her rice the rest of us are probably going to put it everywhere and then we've got a piece of pork tenderloin and we've got uh, a piece of feta cheese and next to our dinner plate i've got a nice green lettuce green and uh green lettuce and onion uh greek style salad and that's it for our recipe this week. I hope you like it. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you make it. Believe me, it is absolutely fantastic. I wish those who are uh, Orthodox a good nativity fast coming up. You'll probably see this when the fast has started. I wish everybody a happy new year coming up. Uh, may the Lord's blessings be with each and every one of you. I love you as always. Tune in next week for another great recipe. And don't forget, if you need to reach me, Zoe's Blind Kitchen Corner at gmail.com or comment in the section below on YouTube. Love you. See you next week. Bye. I am your host, Zoe Fiogos. With sincere love and gratitude, I thank you for watching Zoe's Blind Kitchen Corner.